Hi guys, oh my God, hello, hello, hello. This is day one of the Done With Dieting Challenge. And for those of you that are new to me, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, apparently I'm liking to say things in threes. I'm like, hello, 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 welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> um, so I am so happy and honored to be here with you today. Um, I've literally been waiting. So, uh, my clients know that I love coaching early and getting on early. And I'm like, why, why do people need to have videos? Like I was like, do I need to do this challenge at like eight o'clock at night? I'm like, I'll be asleep because <laughs> I go to bed so early because I get up so early. Um, but even if I didn't get up early, I think I'd still go to bed early. Um, oh my God, look who it is. Julie, what's up? Heather, what's up? Everybody, please say hello. Please say where you're here from. So for those of you that are new to me, I want to explain to you guys the challenge. I'm going to take a few minutes to explain to you what we're doing um, and a little bit about me. So if you just signed up and you literally don't know anything about me, um, I should tell you a few things. So I am a certified nutritionist. I actually went to school for nutrition. Um, I went to school for a lot of things. I also had a career as a fashion designer. Then I went back to school for nutrition and my approach is holistic, meaning that I believe we need to look at all areas of your life. I don't believe that you just struggle with your weight just because of food. I don't believe you just struggle with it just because of fitness. I believe that it's the whole pie and we need to look at the whole pie. It's never if you're having problems with sleep, if you're having problems with stress, if you're having problems pooping, it is never just one thing. We need to look at everything as a whole and that's why my entire business is called Wholeness. So the Done With Dieting Challenge is under the Wholeness umbrella. Um, and what we're doing here and everything that I specialize in, so I'm a certified holistic nutritionist. I also have a background in fitness. I'm an ex-fitness competitor. I am a trained NASM trainer, um, the national, um, or I'm sorry, I was about to put two, two things together here. I was a fitness competitor that won the international, um, uh, national, my God, my brain. What is, you would think I have like COVID brain right now. Um, the international natural body federation, um, for best body, which is essentially, um, not a body builder, um, more like a fitness model, if you will. I was an ideal body coach. Um, and then I really saw a gap in the market and what I saw not even a gap in the market. What I saw with women in particular, myself included, is that we definitely didn't need another diet, that we all knew what to do. The question was, why weren't we doing it? Why was I seeing the same woman in the gym over and over again, every morning at the exact same time as me, but her body wasn't changing? Why was it that I would see women that would lose weight and I'd see them three months later to only gain it back again? Why, 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 why? So it's not that we need more information. <laughs> and that's not what I'm looking to do in this challenge. What's up, Brittany? What's up, Veronica? What's up, Karen? Um, that's not what we're wanting to do in this challenge. I'm not wanting to bombard you with a bunch of statistics and information. What I'm about are simple, easy things that make sense, that literally make sense, um, that work. And it's simple things like I often teach breath. <laughs> breath work to get out of anxious states, to get out of depression, to get into motivation, um, to heal yourself of a lot of things. Now, why does breath work? Because breath is life force. It's how we came into the world. It makes sense, right? It's been taught since the beginning of time. So I'm not about needing a bunch of gadgets or about a bunch of like super expensive things and we need to do all this stuff. I want simple, I want effective. I don't wanna spend 10,000 hours in the kitchen, but I know I wanna look good and I wanna feel good and I wanna age backwards. So my entire cookbook is based off of recipes that are quick, clean, and delicious. This is the way that I like to live my life, this is what I do. So this is also what I teach. I specialize in programming, reprogramming the subconscious mind because what I saw with women, and it started with myself, was that my negative mindset and my lack mindset and my limited mindset is actually what was doing the most damage. And it's that 
disconnection from myself and that self-rejection that was causing me to overeat, that was causing me to sabotage my success. And so what you'll see, Jennifer Smith is here, my master assistant coach. I don't even wanna say assistant, she's my master coach um, for any of you um, that do my Love Your Body, Lose the Weight program, then Jennifer Smith is your primary coach there. She is incredible. Um, so you will see her in here. And um, so, and Jennifer, please feel free to, to jump in at any time with any of your thoughts. Um, but I just wanted to say that, you know, that's what we're going to be doing here. So I'm not going to give you a lot of complex things. What I do want you to know is I'm going to give you everything I got. Um, stay in the group and be active. Know that anything you share here stays here. Each morning, you're going to get a prompt. So all of you receive emails. If you have any problems with your emails, please email support at melissacatherine.com. Please check your junk and your spam folders. Gmail people in particular. Gmail has a lot of firewalls and they love to protect their peeps. That also means you miss a lot of emails that you even sign up for. So um, please always check your spam and junk and make sure to add us to your address book. That's really important. If you wanna get emails from me, uh, then you wanna add me so that I become one of your friendly addresses that comes in. Uh, next, you get a handout a day. This challenge is five days. Um, today in particular, there were two handouts. There's food and your mood and the food and mood tracker. Those were your two handouts for today. You received them this morning. Now, for those of you that feel like, oh my God, there's too many things, there's email and there's the Facebook group and, and where am I watching this? We also have posted the handouts here and they're under the file section. So each day you will see the handout for that day posted, okay? So you can also find them here, but they're also in your email. Now, why is your email important? Because you also get the replays to any of the videos, okay? Replays are good for the duration of the challenge, so please make sure to watch them during the challenge. I love questions, and I love coaching, and I love being able to be here to support you, and I want you to have massive success, so ask me anything and I'm here and I don't care what it is and there are no stupid questions. There is nothing too big. Trust me, I've been doing this for 14 years. I have heard everything. If I don't know something, I will be the first person to tell you. Um, and I guarantee that if I don't know it, somebody in this group will. And if I do know, then I'm gonna share it with you and there's nothing and if you feel embarrassed or for whatever reason and you're just kind of new to groups and Facebook and all the things, feel free to DM me a question that you have and I'm happy to answer it and I will do a group answer so that everybody can benefit here, okay? So um, what else did I wanna say? So each day you receive handouts, each day we have a video um, and I will share with you, Christina, what's up girl? I will be sharing with you also what you can do at the end of this challenge. Um, if you want to continue on with support, I am going to be sharing with you guys about a new program that I have. Well, it's not a new program. It's just a program that I did, haven't offered for, um, four years now, which is kind of crazy. Um, and I'm bringing it back and I'm super, super excited about that. And so I will share with you guys and being here, you are going to be the first to know about it and to receive any of the bonuses that we're offering with that. So I will share about that. You, by no means do you have to. Um, it is not a must for this group or anything of that nature. I created this challenge as a free gift for you. And I also am gonna share with you an opportunity to continue on and to get support to go to the next level because you can only do so much in five days. But anybody that knows me, I'm gonna give you everything I got and there's gonna be a lot. So today is about food and your mood. Um, and oh, and the other thing that I wanted to say is that I do a lot with mindset. So one of the biggest things that I saw was in my own struggle, um, I found myself having just won the International Natural Body Federation and having gained the weight back. Just imagine what that's like standing on stage, winning a trophy, 
being acknowledged by the Federation of Bodybuilding. And I gained the weight back very quickly because I was emotionally eating. I did not, there were a few things that happened. And I share this because it's really important because for all of you, you've all gained weight to, to lose weight, to gain weight, to lose weight. And it makes you feel like a failure. And it makes you feel like you did something wrong or you start to create a conditioned pattern and belief within yourself, one based on guilt and shame, that somehow you're to blame, that somehow you are at fault. And I'm here to tell you that couldn't be further from the truth. The reason that I put the weight back on was because, and I talk about this in one of my um, most, most downloaded episodes, how to create a fit identity in my wholeness podcast. And um, I, you know what, I can link that to, um, or have somebody from my team um, to see. Uh, Jennifer, will you remind me to link, link, uh, link them with that? Um, and so I, I'll put that podcast episode here. It's really, really good to, because one of the things that in order to get the body that you want, um, it's becoming who you want to be because the body doesn't come by you sitting and Netflixing and overeating, right? The body doesn't come by you hitting snooze. The body doesn't come because you went to the gym once. The body doesn't come because you ate good for a week. The body comes as a result of who you become. I'm gonna say that again. The body comes as a result of who you become. And so we, hello Inez, what's up girl? We need to become and look at who would I be? What would the things be that I would do? What would the things, yeah, what would the things be that I would do if I already had that body? Because I can tell you, when you're really in shape, you're not sleeping in. You're getting your butt up because you feel good. And you want to get out there. You want to keep it up. You're not overeating. Even if you do overindulge one night, you feel really bad. And you're like, oh my God, that makes me feel disgusting. Can't believe I used to do that all the time. I don't want to do that anymore. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about acting as if. That's in a future day. But this identity piece is a very important piece. So the very first day in the Done With Dieting Challenge, hi, Kathy, is about awareness. And that's why your handouts today that are also in the file section here in Facebook, but they were also emailed to you at 10 o'clock this morning and tomorrow you will get your handouts at 8 a.m. And you will also receive a daily mantra and you will also be asked to engage in questions in this group. You will be asked after this video, what is your biggest takeaway? Because it's not enough to just come to the video. In order to actually retain the information, we need to process and then regurgitate what we heard. And that comes through sharing ahas, sharing what we learned, sharing our biggest takeaway. And that's how we cement in the information and we retain it instead of it just being more information, right? How many of us like, you know, you listen to audible books, then you're listening to a podcast and then you're like, oh, I popped in this YouTube and then I heard this person on Facebook, right? And now I'm watching Melissa. But how much of it are you actually taking in for it to be an impact for you? Well, I want this to impact you. So you will see that we have prompts set up for you, for you to engage afterwards, for you to actually think during this, what is my biggest takeaway? What am I getting from this? Ah, what was my aha when Melissa was speaking? Have I created a fit identity? What would that look like for me, right? So today, first and foremost, this is about awareness and that's why your handout today was about food and mood. And I had you actually, and you're going to do this throughout this week because each of these handouts stack on each other. And so each day I want you to take the handout from the day before and you're gonna do the handout from the day before with the handout of that day. And you're going to see, oh, okay, so today was about you actually sitting down and writing your food and mood thoughts. 
What are the thoughts that you have around food? This is huge. It might sound simple and it might not seem like a big deal, but when you actually take time to think about how much you thought about food today, hi Donna girl, how much you thought about your weight, the way you look in your clothes, the way you feel when you get up to go to the bathroom, the way you feel when you move during a workout, do you feel heavy in your body? Do your legs feel tight? Do you feel sore? Is your back hurting? Do you feel heavy? Do you feel this, right? Do you feel like, how are you feeling in terms of your health? What are the things that you're saying to yourself around food? Are you saying like, I can't stop thinking about food. I can't wait. Are you laying in bed before you even wake up? Before you even get out of bed thinking about what you can eat first thing when you haven't even pooped yet or you don't even know if you're hungry yet? Have you, right? Often we do that. One of the things that I teach is really to wait to eliminate waste in the body before you consume anything new. Because just think about it. If you're not releasing and you're just piling on, right? then we haven't actually detoxified the body. We haven't allowed for our body to gestate. And if you're sitting there going, Melissa, I don't even poop, then that's, that's a whole nother conversation. You have to watch my TikTok on what to do to poop, right? Because so many women that I talk to think it's normal to not poop for two and three days or once, once every two days, you know? Um, that, no, 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 no. We should at least at a minimum one time a day, right? first thing in the morning. And so we really want to start looking at am I, how am I feeling? But getting in touch with your food and your mood and your thoughts, it's where we have to start. Because if you're not even aware of how often you're thinking about food, how often you're talking negatively to your body, or obsessing over what you ate or what you can't eat or what you should eat or what you didn't eat or how heavy you feel or how hungry you are or how you just overate and now you feel sick and now you feel tired and now you need to, and why did you eat so much? I really want you to look at that. Now, why do we start there? Well, with my clients, when we start in the space of awareness, awareness is the first step to change. And if you're unaware, how can you change anything? And so it's just like when I have clients of mine, <laughs> I have them all the time when, and I'm, I'm not a proponent of just eliminating food groups, but I would, will say that if there's one food group that I'm a proponent from a medicinal standpoint, um, and a gut standpoint and a health standpoint and a weight standpoint and an allergy standpoint and an asthmatic standpoint, <laughs> I would say eliminate dairy. And um, we're the only species that thinks it's normal to drink um, milk uh, from another animal. Anyway, um, I digress. So I say this again, I'm not about removing food groups, um, but I'm, I'm talking because I had a client who was getting cystic acne and I said, honey, please remove dairy for three days and just, you, you just watch, because it's, it's the dairy. I re and her answer, I really don't have very much. And I go, it does not matter. I can put, I can tell you, I'm a body intuitive and I'm a nutritionist. I can tell you right now, it's the dairy. So she, she wasn't listening to me. And then she goes to her hairstylist of all people. And, um, and her hairstylist is like, yeah, I went to, you know, and, and I was told the same thing and I took it out and I had cystic acne and, um, and she came back and this is why we, often like don't right we don't always like listen to like there's been so many ways but people don't want to give up food they really really don't right so she and i talked about dairy from her allergies dairy from her asthma we saw how taking dairy away from like her infant was very very helpful because her daughter was having all of this there's a ton of things right but she wasn't wanting to actually remove the dairy it's these ties to food where we know and we can have all the signs and the direct guidance, but we still will be very tied. Now, why is that? Well, it's because there's something that we get from it. One, as human beings, we don't like to be told what to do. That starts at a very young age. This is why even with my clients, 
I never tell them what to do. They come to me and go, oh, I'm feeling so good. I've decided that I'm going to, you know, I, I don't like eating late. Oh, I feel so good. I've decided that I just kind of cut my portions in half. Oh, I just sit there and I go, I didn't tell them to do any of this, right? They're just naturally doing it because now they're connected to their bodies and they're feeling good. But the truth is, if I told them to do it, they'd rebel against me. Something that I always say, where we restrict will rebel. So I coach in a way where they're doing it and then they, they start feeling good and then they want to keep doing more in that vein, right? So I say this to you because awareness is the first key to all lasting change. Now with food and mood thoughts, I really want to hear from you guys and in the comments below share, how often were you surprised by what you found today? Did you notice that you thought about food a lot more than you ever have before? That, well, not more than you ever had before, but more than you ever thought you would have. Did you notice that um, you thought about food multiple times a day? Please share in the comments so we can all be in this together because that was something that I saw. The more I didn't want to eat, the more I obsessed about food. The more I dieted, the more I couldn't stop thinking about food. When can I eat again? What did I just eat? Wait, I think I still have calories left. What can I eat now? And then I'm eating when I'm not even hungry because I had calories left, right? Can anybody relate to what I'm saying? So if you can, please put it in the comments below. It's so weird doing this off your phone because you can't always like see anything. So um, let me know in the comments below and share what your experience is so that we can all learn from each other here because you're not alone and nobody else is and that's why we're all here but it's sharing your own experience that's going to help somebody else right and valerie what's up girl so in understanding your food and mood i also what we saw in this handout is how certain foods impact our mood now one of the things that i can tell you again after doing this for 14 years is how so many women will tell me how they couldn't even get over the change that happened when they really lessened the amount of processed sugars that they had and that the processed sugars were impacting their mood tremendously. That they noticed that in removing processed sugars, I'm not talking about natural sugar, I'm not talking about stevia, I'm not talking about monk fruit, I'm not talking about honey, I'm not talking about fruit. I'm talking about processed, I'm talking about candies, I'm talking about um, you know, yogurt with fruit on the bottom and a lot of things that have a lot of added sugar to them and white sugar. That how much that having that sugar was aiding in them having depressed, depressed feelings, negative, prone towards negativity, um, feeling really sad and down um, being quite lethargic, a lot of brain fog. So really, really understand how food impacts your mood and it impacts how good you feel in your body. How many of you, okay, I'm going to talk about this one. So who here likes wine? I enjoy wine, but my body does not. I drink wine now, even sulfate free and organic. And I will be up all night. I will almost have like night sweats. Um, I will get that depressant feeling in the morning where there's a prone towards negativity and second guessing and regret. This can be off like one glass of wine. Um, and I will just feel off and tired and a lot of brain fog. So why is that? That's from the sugar in wine. Now we can condition our body to not notice it. And the cleaner you are, the more heightened our reactions, but it also, the more heightened your reactions and many will go, I know it's so annoying, the cleaner that I am, the worse I feel, but that's not actually true. It's just, you've removed the tolerance to the junk. So once we remove it, we actually see what it's doing to our body that we otherwise are masking because we've built a tolerance to it. So when we start connecting that food has energy, that food is life force and can give us clarity, 
motivation, inspiration, confidence, energy, right? And make us feel really good in our bodies, light. I eat to feel light and energized in my body. If you've eaten too much, and if you feel tired after you've eaten, then you've eaten too much or you've eaten foods that don't agree with you, which means you most likely have an intolerance or a food allergy, right? Now, if you're sitting there and every time you eat something, you're noticing, oh yeah, no, it's normal. Whenever I eat that, my nose runs or whenever I have, you know, I'm doing this, I always wake up with a cough and some phlegm in my throat. No, most likely that's from a food allergy. It's not normal to have phlegm in your throat. It's not normal to have headaches after you eat. It's not normal to have food reactions or to feel sick or extensively bloated or lethargic after you eat. Again, you either ate too much or you ate a food that doesn't agree with you. Now, what I find when I teach this is that many don't wanna learn about the foods that don't agree with them because they want to keep eating them. And here's the thing, you can't want two things. As my dad always says, you can't ride two horses with one ass. Meaning, yes, Joe Farley. You can't say you wanna feel good, but still wanna eat crap. You can't say you wanna feel good, but go to bed at one in the morning and expect to get up early and go work out. You can't say that you wanna feel good, right? When all you're doing is telling yourself what an awful, horrific person you are that isn't deserving of love, kindness, or feeling good in her body. Do you see what I'm saying? There's a lot of contrast. Now, I gave you a lot of very broad examples, but they're all very true. And they're all what happens often inside of you. And so discern and, and tell me in the comments below which spoke to you. So with anything that I do, yes, I do a lot of aha, kind of tough love coaching, but the truth is you're not here to stay the same. You're here to change. And you're not here to just to receive a lot of love and hugs from me, although I'd love to hug you and love you till the ends of time. You're here to change. And what I want from you more than anything is to leave these five days awakened to a new reality that's available to you. It's to leave after these five days feeling better in your body, inspired and motivated to continue to make positive changes for you, having learned more about you and what you need to thrive and you feeling more alive in your body than you have in a long time. And that comes first and foremost with awareness. So understanding how you think about food each day and how you relate back to that in your body. So when I'm talking about food, often food takes on human form and human connection. And the reason why, and I'm gonna dive deep into this over the next five days, but the reason why you were never able to stick to a diet, I always say if you struggled with your weight for more than a year, you don't have a weight issue. You have a lack of a relationship with you and you're in a relationship with food. Let me explain. Food is the one constant that's always been there for you since you were a little girl. Food has been your best friend. It's been there for you when you're tired at the end of a day. It never talks back to you. It doesn't need anything from you. Food is there when you're crying. Food is there when you're celebrating. Food is there when you just wanna put your feet up and sit on the sofa and just be accepted and loved for exactly who you are. And let me say this again, ladies, food doesn't need anything from you. In a world where everyone requires something from you, whether it's your partner, your kids, your friends, your colleagues, your, right? You have been and have been a nurturer since you were probably about seven to eight years old and you've loved it and you give so much, 
but you give and you give and you give and you're the bottom of your priority list. But you know what always fills you back up and is there for you at the end of a hectic day or a crazy week? It's food. So why on earth would you ever, would your mind, by the way, that is set up completely for survival, that is set up to keep you safe, that is set up only to give you happiness, that is set up to give you what you need, and your mind is set up, You, by the way, you trained your mind. It's set up to give you exactly what you need at the times in which you're emotionally spent and need them. So you've taught yourself that you're able to turn to food. You've taught yourself that you need food for survival, not just because we need food to survive, but in a human emotional level. So it doesn't matter what diet you go on, you will inevitably find your way back to your best friend and to the relationship that you're in. The one that's always there for you, even if it's dysfunctional, even if it's keeping you from the body that you want and you want to end it, it's the relationship that you know and it's the relationship that you continually turn to and it's the relationship that's been there for you throughout your life. So you can go on a diet, but until you learn how to soothe yourself outside of food and you learn what it is you need to take care of yourself on an emotional, spiritual, physical, and mental level and give back to yourself in a way that feels just as good as food does, then you will always, always end up going back to food, no matter how long you had the weight off. And no matter how much, you'll find yourself in an old pattern with that trusty friend. So I share this because when we're looking at food and our mood, there are often two types of cravings that we have, a head craving and a heart craving. Now I'm going to go into this in more detail, but I wanna give you an overview. A heart craving comes from a lack of fulfillment. A head craving comes from a lack of control. When you have a lack of fulfillment, it is when there is a void within you. Either you are unfulfilled in your relationships, unfulfilled in your career, unfulfilled within your relationship to yourself. And often with heart cravings, we crave cakes, pastries, ice cream, things of that nature, things that are decadent and indulgent, things that are creamy, right? Like I said, ice cream, puddings, custards, pies, pastries, brownies, you name it, they're there. Fudge, wine, cheeses. Now with a head craving, we feel a lack of control. And this is when we often feel stressed, overwhelmed, anxious, and generally like, like I said, like we don't have any control. It's when we have to sit in that space of, I don't have any control in this situation. It's really uncomfortable. And in those moments, you'll find that you're snacking on popcorn, anything crunchy, nuts, crudite, chewing gum endlessly, smoking endlessly, um, you know, granola, cereal, um, any crackers, anything with crunch, right? And so these are two types of cravings that I see often in the space of a psychology of food and our emotions. And so there are four simple questions that I want you to ask yourself in that moment, because to get out of a heart cravings, it's really about going, what is it that I need? So if I'm feeling a lack of fulfillment, what do I need to feel fulfilled, right? And what can I do to love me more? And the primary thing that we need for a lack of fulfillment is to feel connected. So that's when I tell my clients, pick up the phone, right? Spend more time with loved ones, make dates with friends, um, get out of isolation and hermiting, and get into connection, start volunteering, 
busy your calendar, spend more time with family, FaceTime friends, whatever you need to do. For those of you that feel out of control and you're feeling overwhelmed, anxious, and anxiety, maybe it's money stuff, maybe you need to find a new job and you were told you know, your position's gonna be filled. Maybe you need to move in a short period of time and you're just feeling like, oh my God, there's, there's so much here. Well, this is when I want you to really say to yourself, okay, what is one action step that I can take today that's gonna get me one step closer to a goal? What is one action step that I can take? And there are four questions to ask yourself. You sell them on the handout. What's going on in my life right now? Is food gonna solve my problem? Is food gonna serve me or hurt me? And what can I do instead? What's going on in my life right now? Is food gonna serve me or hurt me? And what can I do instead? Right? And so, or no, and the first question is, am I really hungry right now? Am I really hungry right now? What's going on in my life right now? Is food gonna serve me or hurt me? And what can I do instead? So these are the questions. So, so far in this video, we covered what to expect in the challenge. We covered how to optimize the challenge. We covered a bit about my history and my background. You can always go to my website to learn more or check out any um, YouTube videos, my TED Talks, my books, anything of that nature. Um, we talked about where the handouts live. We talked about and broke down today's handout. We talked about head cravings and heart cravings, and we talked about the power of our food and our mood and understanding that awareness is the first step to lasting change. And that's where we began day one of the Done With Dieting Challenge. So I can't wait to hear from you. What was your biggest takeaway from today's, today, day one, day one's video? And um, I can't wait to see you in tomorrow's video. Please share below, tag me, let me know any questions that you have, and please share along with these videos anytime I do any prompts, anytime I say what came up for you here, what came up for you there. I know sometimes it's uncomfortable in these pop-up groups where it's like, I don't know these people yet, and you want me to what? But you know what, ladies, we're all connected. We're all rising together. We're all here for a reason. So we're all connected. Whether you want to see that or not, the universe brought us together. So you're connected in more ways than you even know about. Um, and I'm not going to share that all here. That's uh, in, in another group. So I say this to you, Elizabeth, it's so good to have you, honey. So I say this because share, the more you share, the more you'll gain. The more you gain, the more you get, the more you give, the more you receive, and it goes in a beautiful cycle. And we're all here, we're all connected, we're all one. The higher you go, the higher we go. Oh my God, I'm like a rhyming, I'm like amigo. Um, so anyway, I'm ridiculous right now. Um, I love you all, I'm so proud of you, I'm so honored to be here with you, and I can't wait for day two of the challenge. So stay tuned, get ready, I will see you all tomorrow. But I will be in here reading your ahas from tonight's video. So make sure to post them below because I will be watching. All right, guys, have a beautiful rest of your night. Thank you for being here. All my love.